We're excited to talk with you today about data connectivity. The financial ecosystem is changing rapidly, and data partners, including banks, credit unions, and fintechs, are excited to support their consumers and ensure secure, seamless data connectivity without credential sharing. So now let's dive into the challenge. In our research with the Harris Poll, we found that nine out of 10 consumers are using financial apps to manage their financial lives. That's a 30% increase since 2020. And on average, US FinTech users are using three or more financial apps on their phone. For the first time, we're seeing consumers' primary account status grow beyond traditional banks to fintechs. They're using fintech apps to make payments, budget, invest, and buy cryptocurrency and store their funds. With this shift, consumer expectations of their financial accounts are changing. In fact, 69% of consumers we surveyed said that they would switch financial accounts if their primary account couldn't connect to all of the financial apps they're using. As industry and consumer expectations evolve, Plaid can help you meet your consumers' needs for digital connectivity and further solidify their account with you as their primary account. That's why in May of 2022, we launched Plaid's data connectivity solutions to allow your institution to help consumers securely share financial data. When you integrate with these solutions, your consumer can download over 6,000 plus Plaid-supported syntaxs, search for your organization, and connect their account at your institution to the fintech app or service they want to use. This allows your customers to connect to thousands of fintech apps and services, all while making sure your institution remains at the center of their financial life. In this visual, you can see how the consumer experience plays out from looking for your app, finding it, connecting to your organization, and then linking to all of the other apps and services they want to use. So how do you get started with data connectivity solutions? We will walk you through how to execute a core exchange integration with Plaid. Plaid's core exchange solution will allow your organization to execute an SDX aligned API quickly and easily so you can connect your customers to Plaid's network. SDX is the financial data exchange and they're building a common interoperable solution that allows organizations like yours to share data across the ecosystem. Since Core Exchange is an FDX aligned API spec, it allows for interoperability so that you can build once, connect to Plaid, and other organizations and aggregators. Thanks, Molly. Hey everyone, I'm Nihar. I'm also on Plaid's financial access team. And today I'll be going a bit deeper into our Core Exchange product, discussing our technical requirements to moving the API, as well as the implementation process for Core Exchange. So as Molly mentioned, Core Exchange is a subset of the full FDX API specification. Now what this means is that Plaid team essentially took the full API specification from FDX and created a subset to only include the vital fintech use cases that we see in the ecosystem today, leading to a much more efficient and seamless process for our data partners looking to adhere to the FDX specification and guidelines while demonstrating leadership in this movement to API within the financial services community. So our data partners that would be building the core exchange would be including the following endpoints. Accounts, which includes account details, IDs, balances, transactions, which includes user transactions and transactional history. And this essentially powers the majority of budgeting fintech use cases or PFM, personal financial management uh, use cases we see in the ecosystem today. We also include payment networks, which includes account and routing and is permission for peer-to-peer -peer payments and ACH support as well. We also include contact information, which has your typical identity data, basic name, email address, and phone number. We also include investment support um, for brokerage use cases, organizations that have stock accounts and holdings, uh, where you can also stand up an investments endpoint with Core Exchange. Now, the beauty with Core Exchange is that it is fully interoperable, meaning that you can work with any other data aggregator or data receiving entity that you might be working with in your open banking strategy with these endpoints as well. Uh, on top of that, Core Exchange is also not exhaustive or restrictive by any means. Um, so you can have any other FTX endpoints or specific use cases you might want to support with your open banking strategy through building those FTX endpoints directly. Uh, for example, we have organizations that might want a tax endpoint or a rewards endpoint 
and that is fully supported through this product and with the FTX API specification as well. Core Exchange also requires the usage of OAuth 2.0 for authentication, and we strongly recommend OIDC compliance as well. Now, for those who don't know much about OAuth 2.0, we can dive a bit deeper. So at a high level, OAuth 2.0 is the industry standard protocol for authenticating and permissioning data to third parties. Moving to OAuth 2.0 essentially removes credential sharing across the ecosystem. Previously, a user would have to log in uh, with a username and password on the aggregator domain. But with OAuth 2.0, we now use tokenization technology. And essentially, the end user is only logging in with a username and password on the bank domain directly. The beauty with OAuth 2.0 is that a lot of organizations are able to have a very seamless user experience through the usage of app-to-app -app and biometric technology. What that means is that if you're a financial institution and you have a mobile app, the user can actually log in directly on the mobile application and even use their face ID in order to authenticate with the bank directly. No one else is getting any username or password or any credentials shared throughout this process. And it's a very clean and secure way to authenticate the user through OAuth 2.0. And additionally, OAuth 2.0 aligns with all FTX standards throughout this process. There are a couple of different ways to implement OAuth 2.0. Um, you can build it in-house, and we have uh, some very helpful step-by-step uh, -step documentation on our core exchange specification that can help you build your authentication server with OAuth 2.0 and OIDC compliance as well. And really, it really just depends on your engineering resources and what's availability internally. Now that we've talked a bit more about OAuth 2.0 authentication, we can now take a look at a full Platlink flow user experience uh, with OAuth 2.0 as well as Core Exchange. The user begins in Platlink, knowing that they want to connect their application to their bank account. Now, the user then accepts the end user agreement and searches for Bank of Brocade in the Institution Search pane. Core Exchange enables Bank of Brocade to show up in this search flow. The user is then redirected to the Bank of Brocade's OAuth server directly on the mobile application to log in with their Face ID. Once that authentication is complete on the bank domain directly, they're redirected back to our Plaid link flow to select the accounts that they want to connect to the FinTech application, in this case, OneWallet. Once that is done, they have securely connected their FinTech application to their bank account and can support whatever use cases they are used for this application. Now that the user has successfully connected their FinTech application to their bank, Let's take a zoomed out approach and see what happened behind the scenes with this account looking flow. So as I mentioned, the bank was able to use Core Exchange to show up in this search pane and enable data connectivity for all of the users. On top of that, the bank was able to use OAuth 2.0 and enable app to app and biometrics, which is a very important part of this flow in order to ensure a seamless, efficient consumer experience throughout the whole process. As I mentioned earlier, the end user was able to be redirected directly to the mobile application where they logged in on the bank domain directly. No credentials were shared throughout this process, and they're able to have a face ID biometrics login directly with the mobile application. This is vital to a secure, seamless consumer end-to-end -end experience. And we've seen much higher conversion and much higher of a handoff rate um, for our data partners who use this approach in the linking flow. So we highly recommend taking a deeper look at OAuth 2.0, app-to-app, and biometric functionality as you think about how you want to build your OAuth server. In addition, as I mentioned earlier, one of the other benefits of using OAuth 2.0 is moving away from credential sharing and moving to a tokenized approach. Now, in this flow, when the user authenticates themselves on the bank domain as seen in the middle with the face ID, a bank, in this case, is sending a unscoped token to Plaid with all the user's accounts, which the user will then use to select the accounts on the following account selection plane as seen in this link flow. Once that is done, Plaid actually sends a separate access token to the application downstream, Wonder Wallet in this case, that is scoped specifically to the accounts user permissioned and the data types required for the Plaid products in that FinTech application itself. This minimizes the amount of data in the ecosystem exponentially and ensures a much more efficient build and end user experience for all parties involved. Now that we've seen some of the benefits of moving to API with Plaid's data connectivity solutions, the question remains, how do you implement this product as a data partner? Typically, we've seen this done in six to eight weeks in collaboration with our solution engineering team. We also have robust documentation online that you can look at to see the Corex FTX API specification, as well as an implementation guide 
an authentication guide in order to guide you through the OAuth 2.0 server building process. That being said, we also have self-serve tooling that our data partners can log into and text their validation and testing endpoints directly on this dashboard. We also have dedicated solution engineering support channels in order to communicate directly with your teams. And we are more than happy to help you throughout this process and guide you through each step if needed. Please reach out to dataconnectivity at plaid.com in order to learn more about these products or if you're interested in integrating with Core Exchange. Thank you all for your time today. And please like and subscribe to our Plaid YouTube channel to learn more about what else we're building at Plaid. Thank you.